Hello YouTube, my name is Matt, otherwise occasionally and mostly in my own imagination known as Buxton the Red. I am an occasional DJ. I occasionally get round to bedroom DJing. This is quite terrible. Largely it's because I am very behind on my homework. I have bought this nice, flashy, fancy uh, Native Instruments Control S2. However, I have not yet prepped all of my music collection. All of my legitimate, legally purchased, properly acquired music collection. I gave up on ripping off MP3s a long while ago. For me, the time and quality payoff wasn't worth it. I'd either get crap or spend hours, and it's more efficient for me to just spend the money and buy stuff. And in order to help me get on top of my homework situation, I bought an extra controller. Because my main problem was, I'm having the time when I have my laptop up here, running my tractor with me, but I haven't lugged the controller because I'm not performing somewhere, because I'm not fit to perform anywhere yet, I don't think. So in order to help me get my prep and homework and so on done, I picked up a £30 generic DJ controller. I got it from gettingthemix.com, where they sell it with bundled Mixvibe software, and I guessed that it might be a MIDI device, and I'd be able to map it in Traktor. Turns out this was a correct guess, and I've therefore mapped it. But rather than mapping it play to play, crossfade to crossfade between two um, jog wheels, bass treble, and sort of trims, um, trims for the particular channels, what I've actually done is copy an idea of uh, DJ Ian Golden of DJ Tech Tools, who's produced a lovely custom mapping for the S2, which is dedicated to track prep for Traktor, which gives you a zoom, zoom in and out control on your left tempo fader. The loop controls adjust um, BPM and phase, that mo moves the grid marker back and forth to shift the whole grid of its out of line. But that's all very well and good, but this thing is heavy to carry around with me just for doing homework and track prep. So what I've done is borrowed the ideas and remapped this nice cheapo controller accordingly. I'll make these stickers for DJ Tech Tools be a link to the video for oh, bashing the camera, be a, a link to the video for Ian Golden's mapping for the S, prep mapping for the S2. However, what I'm going to show you is how I've mapped this. This is a very generic device uh, by no identifiable manufacturer with no identifiable brand affiliation. Uh, get in the mix in the UK, market it as the SG1 Mixit. The box labels it as Soundgarden. No wonder they're not using that brand, because as far as I can tell, no affiliation with the band. And it's just called the DJ Controller. And as far as I can tell, it was sold in either Little or Aldi, I forget, in sort of Scandinavian countries. And the little paper manual telling you what the controls are is in one or other of the Scandinavian languages that I can't tell the difference between. But it comes with branded mix of our software. I've not used it. But it sends generic MIDI controls. And very quick hardware review for the thing. It is not a sound card, it's just a MIDI device, bus powered. I'm powering it off a USB hub here, which is an unpowered USB hub. It has no problems. It doesn't twist or flex, the knobs don't fall off. The buttons are clicky, the buttons do light up. They're lighting up because of the mapping I've got set up. The jog wheels are nice and smooth, that's making some noise because I'm jogging back and forth on a track because of how I've got this mapped. It's got a master volume. The master volume is not perfectly smooth, but for a master volume that's not too bad. Crossfader nice and smooth. I've not tried the Mixvibe software at all, but I think there's a demo on Mixvibe's website for that. So maybe it's a good birthday present for someone, but for me it's a portable prep tool. And in case you've bought yourself one of these or are considering getting one and want to know the mapping, here's where the mapping comes in. Here's how I've mapped this controller. And I'll be going back and forth between my screen capture and camera and so on. I've got a little speaker plugged in into the headphone output so you can hear the tick because along with, as in common with Ian Golden's mapping, 
you use the master tempo tick to help audibly check out the lineup. And I'm going to go ahead and reload the track I'm currently working with, which is Soul Searcher, Can't Get Enough. And I've used the browse wheel, which is slightly notchy, scroll to it and hit load A. Load A loads it and sets a whole bunch of stuff up, ready for prep. Then you need to hit Q, which sets up a whole bunch more internal stuff. It's all to do with juggling which track is set as sync um, if master mode is turned on for the sync. I've basically copied a load of stuff out of the DJ Tetzel's S2 mapping for this, but simply created a portable version on a £30 piece of hardware. And there's a sticker on the bottom, which again references the Sound Garden name. It says it's made in China and references a website of unisupport.net, which um, basically indicates that maybe Little or Oldie, whichever it is, aren't selling these anymore. And uh, that company aren't having anything to do with them. So don't know how widely available these things are going to be. And maybe it's an indication of why um, getting the mix have gotten cheap. But for a cheap thing, it's not bad. If you're aware that you're buying a £30 MIDI controller only thing and have a particular use for it, it might fit what you need. So we've loaded our track, we've hit Q to set stuff up, and then when we hit play, the music plays. Now, if I return the master volume down, that doesn't turn the tick down. And the track plays. And while the track's playing, left jog does quite big moves through the track if we go up to the video, like a fairly gentle rotation sweeps you a long way around. It doesn't do CDJ style pitch bending. Now let's turn the ticker off. While the track is stopped, this does slow style sort of vinyl control move, vinyl style movements as if you're manually moving stuff around. This is for targeting a particular spot. I've got the crossfader mapped to zoom, so you can go all the way out, so all the way in on, on the crossfader. Because again, this mapping is for prep. This isn't a playback mapping, because I wouldn't want to rely on this for performance. And I've got the S2 for performing. This is just for I'm prepping, making sure the grid's in place, making sure the tempo's right, making sure it's found the one correctly. Because if I at any point wish to rely on that being right, if it's got it wrong, that's really not helpful. Okay, so the mappings. Play and pause, plays and pause. Q drops you back to the first Q, which was automatically found by Tractor's Analyze, and it sets a bunch of stuff up. So load, Q, and play, you do in that order. If you need to move something, get yourself positioned. If you want to move in a much, much more fine control while you're paused, hold the left scratch button. It lights up. And at that point, that makes the jog do a much, much finer grained motion. Because usually, a, sing a little bit of motion sort of skips either side of where that current marker is. If I hold scratch, it gets about five times more precise for me. So I can dial it in. And let's say I want that marker actually to be back here where it looks like the first transient is on that peak. To move the marker back and forth and therefore slide the whole grid side to side without changing the BPM, the numeric tempo, if you just want to change the sync on the grid, on the right hand deck, tap sync. This makes the right jog move the grid, the whole grid left and right, by what it really does is it moves the current grid marker and all the other grid markers follow. So we move that to the left and it moves. We can move it to the right and it moves. And you can actually use this to move the thing quite a long way if it's got a whole beat out and you want to pull the whole thing one but one beat to the left or to the right. You can spin that around quite easily. And again, if you want to do finer control, hold scratch on the right deck, it lights up. Oop, nudge the left one there, let's get back where we were. Hold scratch on the right and move the right jog and you get a much more precise change of that parameter. Let go and that goes off, you're still in sync. If you want to change the overall BPM so if it tracks as match the tempo wrong, you need to turn sync off and hit rev button and this makes the right jog rather than controlling the sync, it makes it control 
the overall BPM. So as I adjust this, we will go to the on-screen, and you can see the numeric tempo go down, which makes the on-screen, there's no point me pointing at the screen here, it's off-camera, it makes all the grid markers spread out. And if we want to move it back the other way, we can come back the other way. And again, ah, let's scroll to the right a little. Do you do? Zoom in a bit, and I'm still changing the tempo at this point. But I can do a finer grain tempo change again. Hold, scratch, and you make a much much finer change to the tempo, which is a good idea because I now, in doing that, screwed up the nut correctly detected BPM trapped I had. So let's go forward a few beats and dial and sort of use this to dial in what the BPM should be. So again we'll hold scratch for super fine precision control and nudge the left jog. And I think that's where the tempo should lie. Turn rev off so that if neither rev nor sync are lit, the right jog doesn't do anything. It's a safety protection, and every time you load a track or hit play, it turns off these switches, so you have to activate the mode in order to make a change on purpose, because otherwise, you see how clumsy I am with the left jog, I'm going to be screwing up right jog all over the place. Let's, let's just press Q and jump back to the beginning. And one other thing you can do while you have sync switched on, which is for changing the f uh, grid phase, moving the left beat marker, is I've mapped pitch minus and pitch plus buttons to delete and add of grid marker. This is the same as using uh, shift reset and reset if you're using um, in Golden's S2 prep map. So if the first grid mark, if the first beat marker is completely out, or it's like two beats out and you don't want to wind, 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 wind to pull it back in, you can zoom in nice and closely and use scratch and left jog to get your aim really refined if you wish and then pitch minus to delete the marker pitch plus to drop the marker where the current trap position is and then turn sync off because we're finished let's zoom out we're already on the first cue two three four two two three four three two three Four, four, two, three, four, and one, two, three. You can hear the um, bass guitar, double bass, whatever it is, wobble, which tells me I've got the one right this time around. And the left jog is set to do quite big moves so that you can skim through the track. Just visually look at the points again, pointing at the screen, where the changes are. You can tell from the colours where like whole new parts come in or where there's a little breakdown and at this point it's becoming obvious that my tempo is not right let's turn that down and turn the ticker off in my ear so it stop ticking down the microphone so yeah I've not got my tempo quite right here I'm just sort of scrubbing forward you can see the tempo's just slow the grid markers are just slowly I'll go away just slowly falling behind where the beat should be. And we can fix this by either turning the tempo up, so I hit the rev button to into tempo adjust mode, zoom in a bit, oh, and because a small tempo, this small BPM change at this point, because we're a couple of minutes into the track, sort of two and a half minutes down the track, has quite a large impact. If I hold scratch on my right jog, to get into fine control mode, I can adjust the tempo to dial it back in a bit more, or I can be a complete coward and just ask Trancer to reanalyze the track. Right click, analyze async. Um, don't need the key or gain done, I did those earlier, but I'm going to redo the BPM and set the grid. Go. Trancer has a think for a moment, figures out the song. There we go, that's reloaded, and we'll load the track onto the whole deck again. But at this point, I know from prepping this track before, the track has put the one in the wrong place. It's put the one here. Mm -hmm. 
So it thinks that before that bass guitar note is the one, and this is the two here. But that's rubbish, because if you fly forward down the track, this here should be the one. This note here, it should be one here, so two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. But it's not. It thinks that's the two. Which means the whole grid is in the wrong place. But that's right, we've got a custom prep mapping here. And so we're going to do one of those um, marker moves. And it's found the beat right, but what it hasn't found is the right beat in the bar for which one is the one. So I'm going to zoom in on what I should say is the one. Again, scratch plus left deck to do a really fine move. Hit sync for the right deck to enter grid change. And then I'm going to delete with pitch minus, and then add with pitch plus. And that basically remo moves where I've said the grid marker is. So the tractor now has the one here. that is a prepped track using very similar concepts to this but I've actually grown quite fond of having a big jog wheel control to make especially cha um, sync changes so moving the grid marker back and forth and as we've only got one fader control and we're not cross fading because we're not performing we're not mixing deck to deck set that to the zoom so I can go from all the way out to all the way in and this mapping it will be available to download at buxtonthered.com slash map, M-A-P, because it's a mapping. So I would say practice and enjoy, but um, I'm kind of the blind leading the blind here, so uh, I don't think I've earned the right to have a catchphrase yet, but um, I shall stick my ugly mug very vaguely into frame, say thank you very much for watching. And if anyone else is learning as much as I am from all the good people's videos out there, thank you very much for the good people who put awesome videos up. Jonathan Ella Skins, um, Brian S. Red, all those marvellous, marvellous people. And plus um, Ian Golden and the DJ Tetzels guys. Yeah, um, this will be my first thing on video in which I'll teach anyone anything because I built this mapping and I'm kind of the only one who knows how it works. And it's a lot easier to learn this by watching someone press the buttons than it is to read a document. I will also put a readme in with the file just so that you can have something to print out and refer to. But it's basically move the music, move the grid, move the tempo. Oh yes, and the other thing is once we finish finished prepping a track, hit sync and that saves it. So on tractor it's the little padlock lock on and off and the LED follows that so if I load a track that's already locked the sync light comes on to tell me that track is really locked down. Load that one, it's not locked at the moment. Lock it. Locking it prevents any changes from happening, even if I turn the mode on here, nothing moves on screen. And I like using the lock as an indication that I have prepped this track, I have signed off on its uh, beat grid, it's all good. So, it's sync to save, and then load down, move down, load A, Q, play. Lather, rinse, repeat, prep your music. Thanks very much for watching.